In this video, I'm going to show how CircuitPython can be used on a Raspberry Pi Pico to control an LCD display such as the one shown here. I've created several projects using LCD displays using a Raspberry Pi, BBC Microbit and a Raspberry Pi Pico running MicroPython. But in this video, I'm going to look at using a Raspberry Pi Pico running CircuitPython instead. In response to some of the comments on my earlier videos, I'm going to go into a bit more of an explanation about I2C and answer the questions about whether a level shifter is needed for I2C or not. I'll be using a 16x2 LCD display based around the Hitachi LCD controller HD44780. I'll also be using an I2C serial to parallel interface which is based around the PCF8574. Don't worry if you don't recognise these part numbers. I'll be explaining them throughout this video. The finished project for this is an LCD based reaction game. I've already explained about installing CircuitPython and controlling NeoPixels in an earlier video and in future videos I'll be showing the complete game. If you'd like to get notified of the next video please subscribe and enable notifications. If you'd also smash that like button at any point in this video that would be a great help. First, let's look at the display in more details. This is a single colour 16x2 LCD display known as an LCD 1602. You can also get similar displays with different number of characters. They are backlit and have manual contrast control. The characters are made up from a dot matrix display with 5x8 pixels for each of the characters. These need an LCD driver integrated circuit to make it easy to drive these from a microcontroller. The Hitachi LCD controller HD44780 is a popular controller and other vendor products are compatible with the same signals. If you wire a HD44780 directly to a microcontroller you'll need a lot of wires. There are two for the power plus 5 volts and ground. Contrast adjustment which uses the potentiometer on the right. Register select Read write, normally connected to ground, clock enable, optional four bits of data if using eight bit mode, which are not shown here, and then four data bits required for both a four or eight bit mode. And also for the backlight, an anode and cathode connected to the power supply. This needs at least six of the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Fortunately, the Pico has plenty of, with 26 pins but there are better ways of using these than sending parallel information to an LCD display. One good thing I will say about the HD44780 is that it has a good voltage tolerance. If you're powering the LCD display from a 5 volt supply, as shown here, then the 3.3 volt output from the Pico is sufficient for sending the signals to the HD44780 without needing any form of voltage buffering or level shifting. To reduce the number of pins that need to be wired to the microcontroller, many displays come with an extra circuit board soldered on, or one that can be added afterwards. This then takes a serial signal, which it converts into the parallel signal to feed to the display controller. These add-on boards are available in SPI or I2C variants, and it is the I2C that I'll be looking at here. The board can be shown by looking at the bottom image, which is the rear of the display, the green PCB is the rear of the display, which has the HD44780. The black PCB is the I2C converter that we're talking about here. The particular board I'm using here has a PCF8574 integrated circuit, which is the central part of the black LCD backpack. This is an 8-bit I.O. expander for the I2C bus. There are other boards that use different ICs. For example, Adafruit has a backpack based around the MCP23008 instead. This will be important later when we come to control the display from the Pico. The board also includes a potentiometer, a variable resistor, which can be used to adjust the contrast. Ideally, this should be easily accessible, as you may need to adjust this to compensate for a change in temperature. You could desolder the potentiometer and connect one elsewhere, or you could handle that on the Pico microcontroller 
by replacing the potentiometer with a GPIO connection and using PWM to adjust the contrast. In reality, once it's set, it's usually good for a reasonable range, but do consider how easy it is to adjust if required. I2C is a serial bus technology. This means that you can connect multiple devices to the same two ports. The two connections are the serial data bus, labelled SDA, and the serial clock, labelled SCL. You also need ground and possibly a power connection if you're running the power from the Pico. In this example, the Pico is acting as an I2C controller with two target devices. One is the LCD display and the other a sensor. To differentiate between the two devices, then each have their own address. Here I've shown the LCD display at hexadecimal address 29 and the sensor at hexadecimal address 19. The devices will only respond when they are sent to their address. Some devices have fixed addresses, which can be a problem as it prevents you connecting multiple devices with the same address to a single bus. For the LCD backpack, there are three solder pads, A0, A1 and A2. Soldering those in different combinations results in different addresses. I2C is based around an open collector, or more commonly open drain signals. This means that when putting a signal onto the bus, it defaults to high and the transmitting device pulls down to ground to represent zero volts through a transistor or a FET. This is shown here. The MOSFET connects the bus connection down to the world's ground. And when there's a signal to the gate, the MOSFET will switch on and pull the bus down to a low voltage. There is, however, nothing going to the positive voltage. So there needs to be a way to set the signal high. This is achieved with pull-up resistors for each of the lines. The pull-up resistors should be external and connect each of the signal lines to a suitable power supply. In this case, 3.3 volts would be ideal, as that is safe for both the Pico and is sufficiently high that the 5 volt LCD display and sensors will handle it correctly. That's the way it should work. In reality, presumably in an attempt to make it easier, many I2C devices have pull-up resistors on board. This has two potential problems. One is that if you're connecting lots of devices, you could end up with more pull-up resistors than you need. But more worryingly, when connecting 5 volt devices to the same bus as 3.3 volt devices, such as the Pico, then you can end up with 5 volt signals going to the Pico, which could damage the Pico's GPIO port. Here are three potential solutions, depending upon the amount of risk and effort. First, you could remove the pull-ups from the device, such as the LCD backpack. These are surface mount devices, so they're very small and it can be a bit difficult to remove them. The safest solution is to use an I2C by directional level shifter. The image shows a product from Adafruit, which I used in the example later in this video. They are not very expensive, but it does add some cost. The cost is comparable to that of the Pico, although that's more of a reflection of how inexpensive the Pico is, rather than the level shifter being expensive. But it also takes up space and additional wiring, especially when using a breadboard. If you're looking at creating a PCB, then the space on the PCB and the cost of the individual parts is less than the breakout board. So it becomes less of a problem then. The last alternative is just to cross your fingers and hope for the best. There is a risk of damage to the Pico connecting it to a five volt supply. However, the pull-up resistors are fairly high values typically about four and a half kilo ohms or higher. So it's not the same as connecting directly to a five volt supply. In reality, I've used this before and it's unlikely it will damage the Pico. When I've measured the pull-up voltage with a Raspberry Pi and similar I2C devices, then it's been above 3.3 volts, but not enough to be overly concerned about. Obviously, this is at your own risk and you may want to review this on your own project especially if connecting multiple 5 volt devices to the I2C bus. So here is a wiring diagram showing the Pico mounted on a breadboard. I've split the power connections with the top red power rail taken from the 3.3 volt output on the Pico and the bottom power rail taken from VBus. The USB power supply should be able to 
provide plenty of power for the LCD display. I've created a video which goes into detail about the different power pins on the Pico and how they can be used. The level shifter is shown to the right with SDA going through A1 to B1 and then onto the LCD display. SCL goes through A2 to B2. With that wired up, the next step is the software of the Pico. In this case, I'm using CircuitPython. You can find out how to install CircuitPython and how to install libraries in my earlier video, an introduction to CircuitPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. See the link in the description. In that video, I show how to download the Adafruit libraries and install them. You can follow these instructions if you are using an Adafruit LCD backpack. But the backpack I'm using here is the PCF8574 and you need to download the library for that separately. This appears to be a very popular inexpensive backpack. I use the CircuitPython LCD library from D. Halbert on GitHub. See the link in the description. After downloading the library, you can copy that to the Pico in the same way as shown in the earlier video. Basically, just copy the appropriate files to the lib directory on the Pico. If you're using an Adafruit backpack, then I'll include a link in the description for where you can see some example code. The example I'm showing here is for backpacks using the PCF8574 IC. This is shown in the MU editor, which is a very good way to connect to a CircuitPython device and start coding. The file is named code.py, which will run automatically every time it's saved to the Pico. The code starts by importing the required libraries. Note that board is used instead of machine, which you may have used if you've been using MicroPython. The same with the bus IO, which is used for I2C in CircuitPython. Next are some variables to set up the pins for the I2C bus using GP16 and GP17, and the address of the I2C backpack of 0x27, hexadecimal 27, which is 39 as a decimal value. I've defined the number of columns or characters and the rows as 16 by two. There are other LCD displays. For example, I also have a larger display, which is 20 by four which is useful if you want to display a larger message. This is all then included in the setup of the LCD display. First, it creates I2C as the I2C device. Then using that as an I2C PCF8574 interface, which is then used with the LCD driver. Once this is set, then you can refer to the LCD display using the LCD object, followed by an appropriate method, such as the example here on line 24, which sets the cursor mode to cursor mode.hide, effectively hiding the cursor. I've then put the rest of the code in a main function, which is called by this bit of code at the bottom. This is more important when we come to the finished project as it makes it easier to call external functions. Essentially, this two lines is called by the program whenever it's run as the top level code, i.e. it is running directly by the interpreter rather than being imported as though it was a library. And then the main part of the program is all in this main function. It starts by clearing the LCD display. It's usually a good idea to do that whenever you want to display something new. Otherwise, you can end up with the old text mixing up with the new. Then this lcd.print statement will send the word starting to the LCD display. This will be displayed on the top line with nothing on the bottom line. Then after a short pause, clear the display again. And then this will print across two lines. It will say about start Slash n indicates start a new line and then says the timer on the second line. And then it will sleep for a little longer. Then the rest is a loop. The loop will run forever because it's a while true loop. 
It clears the display, says counting, followed by the number of the count variable. Note that it's being converted to a string with the str function and then appended to the existing string with the plus character. It then increases the count and sleeps for a second before repeating. You may be able to think of a bug in this code. The code keeps counting forever. It doesn't check if it exceeds the maximum number. Fortunately, Python doesn't have a maximum for the size of an integer, allocating as much memory as is required. So the limit is the 16 characters on the display. With 16 characters updated one every second, that's approximately 317 million years before it reaches the limit. So I think we're good there. This is a simple program, but this covers what is needed to integrate into the final project. If you want to see that, then hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications with the bell icon. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on a future video.